Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another model mukbang. Today I have my friend Brittany. Hi guys! So we're gonna do a mukbang today. We are going for something a little bit different. A lot of the times we like grub heavily during these videos, but <laughs> we decided to keep it healthy. Yeah. Um, do you, you have a shoot this weekend? I have one tomorrow. I don't have a shoot. I've just been craving juice press, okay. honestly. So she's been craving, craving healthy. <laughs> So, um, wait, let's talk about yours first because yours is pretty seasonal. Mine's seasonal. I wanted to go like basic white girl and I went <laughs> pumpkin spice smoothie. If you guys never tried it. It looks really good. Yeah, it does. I think it's just pumpkin and like vanilla protein. Yeah, and, and dates like, maybe. Spices. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, it sounds really good. Um, so if you guys have a juice press near you, you should definitely go and check out. Well, if it tastes good. Have if you tried it yet? No, I haven't. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Try it. I want to know. It's good. It's good? <laughs> it's like not super pumpkin-y, which I guess is probably good. You don't want it to be like... Yeah, drinking yeah. pumpkin juice. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a simple um, berry vanilla protein smoothie. Mm -hmm. So, I'm actually happy we're having smoothies because the last mukbang that I filmed, it was amazing, but we were eating like pita and a falafel, uh, falafel and a pita. <laughs> and the falafel was like going everywhere, so this is going to be a lot yeah. more aesthetic on camera. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we got also, shots. <laughs> we also got one more thing. <laughs> because it is, well, at the time that we're filming this video, it's like end of September. It's flu season. And still COVID season. And still COVID season for God knows how long. So we're going to take our shot. We're going to take our shot. Oh, should we do it together? Should you cheers it? This is the model way of taking <laughs> Yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Are you taking it in one go? Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna try. <sighs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh no. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it wasn't as b <laughs> <laughs> That was actually, wow. Oh my god, the spice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the ginger. <laughs> I can breathe. <laughs> I'm like crying. I feel like clear my sinuses all of a sudden. I probably should have said that. <laughs> so, a little bit of a backstory on Brittany. I don't know if you know this, but I, I kind of knew who you were or I knew of you before we met. Really? Yeah. I, I think I just had like seen you on um, mutual friends like Instagram and stuff okay. like that. And now we're, now we're friends, so yeah. it's kind of cool. Well, because we haven't known each other for that long, I don't really mm -hmm. know like your whole story. model story, your whole career. So if you want to tell the people my whole your whole career or like just a condensed version would be cool. Um, yeah, let's try to condense it. I mean, it's pretty simple. So I started out, I didn't get scouted like most girls. I okay. did walk in. My mom walked me in. Um, and it was one of those things. So my family, I grew up in hearing about my aunt and my grandma and even my dad. Like everyone kind of modeled a bit. No way. Yeah, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I have family that's modeled. And then my whole life, people would always tell you, like, oh, you're going to be a model. You're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, so like, when I got to high school, I was going through one of those rough high school periods. You know, you have, like, breakup with high school boyfriend, drama with girls, yeah, everything. So my mom's like, okay, let's get you out of the scene and take you to Denver and sign you with, like, a local agency. Oh, my God. And just have like an outside of school activity. I'm like, okay, whatever, like mom. How old were you at this point? 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird times. Yeah. In, yeah, I feel you. I think it was one of those like, I was excited, but I was also trying to play it off cool and being like, oh, whatever, like, I'm in high school, I'm too cool for this. But then I signed with like the local agency and they're like, no, you could travel, you could move to New York and have so many opportunities. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Next thing I know, two weeks later, I'm in New York City. And I signed. Right after you signed? Yeah. Oh my god. Like, right That's away. Crazy. Yeah, because I think that agent already had a trip planned. So he was like, okay, come with us to New York. Go. And I met with like five of the top ten agencies. And DNA signed me like, right then, right there. They're like, okay, we love this girl. Like, she's beautiful. And give her a few years of high school, but... We're going to develop her. That's yeah. crazy. DNA is like one of the best, of yeah. the best agencies. Yeah, they're very, it's funny, their reputation, once you're in the modeling world, is very, either people love them or hate them, I feel mm -hmm. like. 
but I love them. They, I have no bad words to say about them. They were a great agency. Finished high school. That's the one thing I will say I loved about DNA is they looked at me, even when they met me and they're like, we love you, we wanna sign you, but you should enjoy high school. Like spend the next two years finishing your junior and senior year, go to prom, do this, and yeah. then like come model. I think that's so important. And I don't know about you, you probably get messages from young girls too. Yeah. Asking like, tips and stuff. I get a lot of messages from girls who are like 15, 16, even 17 who are like stressed about their career and stressed about time running out and like the reality of it is you don't start working until you are like developed a little bit more. Yeah and I think especially now mm -hmm. like you don't see fashion week taking that 16 or 15 year old girl Yeah anymore. like they used to. Yeah. Because I think thankfully there's laws in place now and like we're understanding that having a childhood is so important for people. Mm -hmm. It is really important and like, I don't know, I think it's also changed so much. Like yes, there's still fashion week, but it's not the only way to like build, make a name for yourself or get yeah. into the industry anymore. And unless it's fashion week, we don't need a 16 year old, you know no, what I mean? Exactly. And I think a lot of brands too don't, unless you are like wanting to target the teen market, like a lot of yeah. brands don't want to hire no, yeah, they want they want actual like women. Yeah. Yeah. Or just like grown into yourself, like developed a little bit more, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well and even then I still think I love that I started at nineteen, I think, full time modeling. Yeah. Nineteen. But I even say then like I had so many opportunities and I was so insecure still at nineteen. Yeah. That if I had done them at like twenty two, twenty three, it would have been so different. Yeah, I agree. I think that I am only getting to like, I don't know. I've had great jobs and I've had great like opportunities obviously, but I feel like I am only getting into like the good part of my career now. Yeah. Which is crazy because it's been so many years already, you know? Well, I think that's what I've always heard from people. Well, except for like the high fashion, I feel like that's the other part. There's a very different type of model. Yeah. And so girls like us, like we were more commercial. Mm-hmm. And it's not like longevity is there. You have such a long career in our type of modeling. Yeah, and like I think we have different waves, mm -hmm. which is where that's the fun, but also the stressful part about our job. Yeah. So do you feel like when you were um, when you were first starting out with DNA that they wanted you to go the high fashion route? Um, they tried it a few times with me. Like they're like, okay, lose the weight for Fashion Week, which was really hard for me. Like to be fair, I couldn't like healthily do it. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. I think I remember the lowest I got my hips. I like literally was like vegan, aka I ate like carrot sticks and popcorn. Like right. it's not sustainable, it's yeah. not healthy. Um, but when I started working, so DNA had me travel for a year. They had this whole plan. So I traveled and built up my book and built up my experience. And then when I got back to New York, Victoria's Secret and Pink had already shown interest in me, which is what they told yes. me was going to happen. <laughs> right, yep. And you're like, okay, that's not going to happen. And you're like, oh crap, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> yeah, you even did the casting, right? Um, I did four years of the Victoria's Secret casting. Okay, right? well, how, yeah. you're the first person that I've had on who's done the Victoria's Secret casting. How was it? No, I think Cindy's done. That's oh, sorry. Cindy. Yes, Cindy. I had Cindy, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Cindy. <laughs> um, but I never asked her about the VS casting. Yeah. How was um, the experience? It was so different. It's not like any other casting, mm -hmm. I think. Um, it's just the build up for it. Like even my right. first year, I think it was so nerve wracking. I was like, they do two rounds by the way. So it's not just one. <laughs> you have to go in twice. Yeah. And then you have to be invited to go into even the first round. So it's really, it actually really is exclusive. Mm -hmm. So just like getting invited is such a big deal. And then to make it onto the second round after meeting John Pfeiffer is such a big deal. In my first year, I remember I couldn't even walk. I was shaking so much. Yeah. I was just like, what? the nerves, I can't even imagine. Yeah, that first round, it was just like insane. And then I remember my second round, I was in there and then Gigi Hadid was in the room with me. And I'm like looking and I'm like, no, no. I'm like, wait, what? Like, I actually did a Maybelline commercial um, and I was in the same makeup room as Gigi. And it's kind of like... I don't know, I feel like we kind of work with those people all, all the time, but like when you're in a room with someone who yeah. has so much like influence, I guess, it does feel different, yeah. yeah. And you're like, like, I don't belong here, <laughs> what am I doing? So true, and like thinking about that was five years ago. So that was That's right crazy. when she was starting to blow up. Yeah. Like, she wasn't 
Gigi Hadid. This was like, that was like that video, you know, where Ed's like, hey Gigi, we'd love for you to yes, walk, yes, and yes, she's yes, like yes. crying. Like that happened right after I walked, and I didn't even know. Oh my god. They were like, oh, that's so crazy. Like, we do. We're witnessing yeah. other girls' success along with our own. Yeah. I think it's it's cool because everybody has a different timeline. Like, just because it's not happening for you in that moment doesn't mean it won't. It yeah. just might happen at a different time, you know? I think that was a part. So, like, the first year I went to the casting, I hadn't started working with Victoria's Secret yet. I had, I don't know if I'd gone in for my actual casting for them yet. But I know shortly after the casting for the show, I went in for one with Pink and then Victoria's Secret too. For the e-commerce? For the e-commerce. Okay. And both loved me and both showed interest. And so for my agency, that was probably like really exciting. Yeah. I think having a girl walk the show is great because it really did project out your career at that point. Mm. But having a girl work their e-com, like, right? That's like that's like consistent money. Yeah. yeah, it's like consistent regular income. It's it's huge for it's anybody. Huge. That's like that's a dream. Yeah, know? yeah. So, that's every model's dream. Every like, it really is. <laughs> it really is, and I think it's like so special when you get it, or even just to go in for a casting or anything. It's so exciting and. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, I agree. What's like one thing that you would love to do that you haven't yet? I always love asking this question and finding out like what people's dream clients or dream jobs are. I don't know. Well, one of them was to like have like a hair campaign thing. Oh, yeah. And I just You did just shot one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a small one considering, but still it's like, I'm going to be on a Revlon box soon. Yeah. And I was like, this has been one of my goals. That's no, they're the best. I did the, when I did my, my, my really blonde hair, that yeah. was for a hair box. Oh my god. Those are like the best jobs to get. Yeah, they're just so fun and it's something that you're like, oh look mom, you can see me in this I know, store. you can tell your mom to buy the box and she'll like have it forever. It's yeah. really cool. It's just so cool and it was, and it's like what you were saying, what we were talking about. Like I thought only my pinnacle was going to be working like Victoria's Secret or Gap and now I'm like 25. I'm like, oh my god, a hair box. Like, Right. Hit it's the things pinnacle. that you don't think are going to be big, but feel big, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think your perspective of like success or like wins in your career change as you get older, for sure. Yeah. And you have a different understanding of it and like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so now that we're on the path of like careers and stuff, I kind of want to talk to you about the things that you're doing on the side, because you're doing yeah. some really exciting things and you're pivoting a little bit um so yeah yeah talk to us <laughs> <laughs> so i've always been someone who like i love modeling it's obviously been my job for over five years now um but almost six years wow yeah six years yeah when you think about it isn't that like you were I, I don't know i mean next month no in two weeks i'm gonna have been here for six years that's insane yeah yeah, that time flies. It time flies, really. And you think like, oh, I'm only going to do this for a few years. And I'm like, oh, six years. Yeah. <laughs> I got my bachelor's degree for over four of those years online. Yeah. Because I just, I don't do well with downtime. Yeah. In modeling, we have a lot of spare time. As you know, like, yeah. you started YouTube and doing this, so. You go through seasons. I think there's months where you're super busy. Yeah. Which is when you're like, why am I doing all this stuff on the side? Because yeah. you end up like not having free time, you end up doing all this stuff on the weekends, but then you also have months where you have two jobs. You know? Exactly, and you're yeah. like, hey, what do we do? Like, what especially do I do? during COVID, it's like... We had six months of nothing, basically. You yeah. Know? Exactly, and like, thankfully I graduated school during that time, but then afterwards I'm like, can you more? Yeah. So I'm collaborating with one of my girlfriends, uh, Lauren Lane, yes. and we're doing cover-ups, and I'm helping her with her next season. Of Lauren Lane Swim. It's so, so exciting. Yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah, it's been like a, a new venture for you. Yeah. Because you didn't really, what did you study? Communication? Yeah, I got a Bachelor of Arts in Communications. Um, I like the marketing and business side of the industry. Yeah. And then that was like the best program for me to get online, I felt like. I kind of feel like it's like the business degree of marketing. Yeah. Like it can go to so many different. There's so much you can do with communications. It yeah. really is. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love that about you too. Is like we have we've had some pretty like cool conversations about money and like business and stuff, and I yeah. like that. I do too. I love the friends that you can go deeper with and like expand your knowledge and stuff. Yeah, and especially in modeling, it's like you you inevitably get to this point where you want to do more, mm -hmm. and it's not because modeling isn't a full time job because it is, but like 
once you know what you're doing, it's not always the most mentally stimulating. So you want, you know, you want to either be doing something for yourself or kind of always want to be surrounded by people who are pushing you and like keeping you focused in that area too. Yeah. And I think as people who are like really driven, mm -hmm. like modeling drives you sometimes towards things, but then there's times too where you're like, oh, I need, you get like, that, like <laughs> mental, like I love just being creative and thinking and having it, seeing growth in a way. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard to describe and I, I think about this a lot, but it's like, for me, I think the, the reason why I started YouTube and why I spent so much time in it is because I have control over the whole process. Whereas with modeling, you don't, you're like, you're like a piece of the progress or a piece of it, but you don't have any say. You can't really do anything other than your job. Whereas like, I, I think that's why a lot of models end up doing something like in a, in a creative world, but they're like on the business end is because they can actually like do something and have input and yeah. have a say. And we gain a lot of experience through yeah. modeling. Like, yeah. Our jobs are very transferable. I think people don't really know that. You just don't think about it, you know? Like I have a lot of friends right. that are like, oh, we're just models. And I'm like, no girl. No. <laughs> like, we've learned how to manage money. We've learned how to- Social media. Social media. Yeah. Like even just getting to work on time and learning how to navigate like cities. Like, yeah, very cultured, very like, Streetwise also I know that you've traveled a lot. Yeah, I've traveled a lot So you, you learn a lot by like just traveling and working in different cities working with different people Yeah, yeah, and you gain this independence too and this confidence that I think it takes people a long time to learn Yeah, and we're just thrown into it at such a young age. Like, yeah, you're just like thrown in the pool and like <laughs> you, really, you gotta like you really gotta swim <laughs> I'm like I I mean I remember starting out and it's like so many of us are like flustered and stuff and yeah. like only so many people can actually do what we do. Yeah and like, and like get out of that yeah that phase and like yeah pull through. It's funny because it really is so worth it to keep going. Mm -hmm. But when you're in it in the beginning it's like Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to be really honest about that because the beginning is not the best, but it, it gets so much better over time. Oh, yeah, I was laughing. So I just signed with a new agency. And oh, yeah, yeah. I was telling my booker how I was with Go Back to DNA. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about that. We were like, oh my god, how do you survive that beginning stages of DNA? Because it was so intense. Yeah. Like they're an agency that, yes, they're developing you, but it's so business. Yeah. I think a lot of girls have a hard time dealing with that. Dealing with that and separating that and understanding like we're signing up for a job. Right. And this agency is trying to make you successful for mm -hmm. that job. I think another thing um, that is good about you is like I speak about this a lot on my channel like when it comes to your body and just in general like yes our product is our like us ourselves yeah. but you have to separate that from who you are as a person versus who you are as a product you know exactly and I think that's very relevant when you're talking about your experience with DNA or just like your experience in the beginning yeah it's like you have to separate that you have to and it's such a hard thing to separate yeah we are humans and we do have yeah, it feels personal but it's not yeah I mean I think that's where like I knew the things that I could take personally like what you're talking about the health mm -hmm. or like the weight or whatever it was like I wanted to learn how to do that but I wanted to do it the right way yeah with like nutrition and fitness and like yeah being my best self mm -hmm. rather than feeling like okay I have to totally like restrict food or restrict things that make me happy right like, to be successful it's like right you just yeah. have to find balance and like make it a lifestyle yeah which does take time but okay. don't you feel like you're the you're the best that you have ever been because you feel the best, you're doing the things that you love, you know now how to eat, how to exercise for your body. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's like you said, like, oh, I have a shoot this weekend, so I want to eat healthy. Like, we right. now know how to, like, think in that way. And it's not like you're restricting your lifestyle as much as you're just like... No, it's a sacrifice today and then tomorrow. Like, after my shoot on Saturday, I'm going to order some food and like yeah sit on the couch you know what I mean and enjoy myself like it's not that you can't do those things it's just you have to do them at different times and like yeah. just be mindful well it's just mindful in the fact that it's like you could probably eat a burger today and you still would look great tomorrow but you wouldn't feel yeah 
great. And so it's that you do it for yourself you more do it for so. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the client's gonna look at you like, even when I'm you on ate my a burger yesterday. <laughs> yeah, burger. <laughs> even when I'm on my period and I would be shooting laundry, I'm like, oh my god, I feel so bloated right. and stuff. And people are like, you still have abs shut up right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, it's just an internal feeling. Yeah. But it's still real, right? And you end up yeah. just like, I think as you get older, it gets better because you get to know your body better. Yeah. You do what works for you, but you still find the time, you know, to have those moments where you enjoy your food and have fun. Yeah. And I say always find things that are fun for you. Like there's always a balance, right? Yeah. Like balance, balance, balance. Balance, always balance, balance. balance. <laughs> It's but it's so true. true. It's true. It's true. I feel like people we struggle with that so much. Like we start feeling guilty about things. Like, and you shouldn't. Like, mm -hmm. you should know there is a balance. And like, and I always say it's about workouts too. Like, I'm not gonna do a workout I don't enjoy. Yeah, because then it starts to. Um, I don't know. It starts to become a task. Like a task. And it, one. Yeah, and like in the short term, yeah, you can do it. Mm -hmm. But if. I don't know, for us, this is a career that we're going to have for however long. So you might as well, you know, put in the extra time and effort to find something that you do really like. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say, too. Like, don't force yourself to do stuff that, you know, you don't like. You don't like. like, I wouldn't force myself. I think I tried a lot of different things. But just because, like, maybe even, like, my favorite model does this type of workout, mm -hmm. I might hate it. Yeah. And it might not like yoga. Really like I respect oh. people who do yoga so much. I'm with you on this. I can't do yoga. <laughs> I can't do it. And as much as I would love to be that person who like does yoga every morning, I would rather knock someone out and box or like you know yeah. go for a sweaty workout on a cardio machine. I know that sounds boring to a lot of people, but for me, that's like that's what works. That's what works. For me, I like Pilates. I think it's a different way that you're moving your body and like. Yeah, Pilates is amazing too. Yeah. Okay, so something that I ask every guest that I have is um, if you had to give advice to someone who's just starting out in the industry, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? It doesn't have to be one thing if you think of like multiple things, but... Um, I think finding a really good team is important. Um, I've experienced really great agencies and then I've had the not so great agencies or agents. Really good point. And so I think for, at least that's something that I've learned is like having a good team and people that you work with and you can rely on and you both have like a similar sense of work. I don't know, it's just so important. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. That's such a good point. I think like who you have behind you is, um, it, it can actually be like a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's agents who are bad necessarily, but it, it just... It's more so about the agent like being passionate about your career and believing in you and pushing for you. Yeah. That's what the biggest thing is. I think, yeah, and for me, I know, like maybe that's why like when starting out younger, I worked better with a more professional style agency is because that's what I need. Mm -hmm. I need someone to come to me and be like, okay, Brittany, you have to do blank, blank, and blank. Mm -hmm. And that will help us push you to blank, blank, and blank. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> that sucks, but I'll do it. Right. And then it works out in the end where, I don't know, I just didn't work well with the people that are like, oh, you look great, you're fine, like, mm -hmm. we have no goals, no drive. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't work for and me It doesn't either. work, yeah. I don't know. I have a lot of freedom in what I do outside mm -hmm. with my YouTube. I feel very supported in that. But I definitely make sure to, like, schedule meetings often and, like, ask for feedback. And, like, when I do ask for feedback, it's very constructive but also just very honest you know what I mean and yeah. like I think in the past I needed that with my weight and I would always get an honest response because yeah. that's what you want in the end right like you yeah. want to be the best that you can be you want to make the most money and have the best clients so you need a team that's also going to keep it real yeah you know well it's like we said we have to separate you have to separate it but at the same time like I want to be the best I can be so that there's no blame being thrown on me in a sense you know like yeah even if the client like says, oh, like she wasn't the right blonde for us, like that's not personal. That's not about Brittany. But like, if I go to that casting, I want to know I brought my best self. Right. And that my team knows I brought my best self. Yeah. It's so true. That's such a good point. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for so thanks for coming fun. on. Yeah, I'm so happy. You have a lot of good like experience and tips okay. and just like you as a person. 
keep it very real and I just love that so thank you Colorado roots <laughs> Colorado roots <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this mukbang. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna leave Brittany's Instagram in the description box. Go follow her on Instagram, go check yeah. her out. Um, as always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you guys have any recommendations for who I should do a mukbang with next. Yeah, yeah that'd be fun. Um, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, bye! Nah, bye.